right, good afternoon. Back to playing some football and uh, certainly an exciting week. Um, get an opportunity to, um, you know, test ourselves against uh, an outstanding football team in Alabama. And I think everybody knows that, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, one of those games that, uh, you know, puts you uh, in a position to uh, challenge for an SEC championship. So we got to go on the road um, to Tuscaloosa. Um, you know, we've got to ra raise our level of preparation this week. It's not about rising up to the competition. It's, it's rising to the level of uh, preparation necessary to play an outstanding football team in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams. I think, um, you know, Coach Saban and his staff, Coach Reese should be commended for, you know, what they've been able to accomplish offensively uh, since early in the season and, you know, obviously committed to uh, – uh, Jalen, uh, he's, uh, he's really done a nice job throwing the football. Uh, I think a lot of people were questioning his ability to throw it. Um, but uh, he's been effective, efficient, um, big plays. Um, certainly uh, Bond uh, and Burton at the wide receiver position have given them playmakers. Uh, they're physical up front. I think they're massive on the offensive line. Uh, Williams and McClellan at the running back position and of course their defense has been as good if not better than anybody consistently over the last six weeks giving up 21 points or fewer. Um, Turner and Downs and Arnold there's a number of players their defensive line is stout and physical outstanding in special teams. Um, Shard is one of the best in the country uh, so again we know what we're up against um, Outstanding football team on the road, um, playing at Alabama, and um, you know, great challenge and a great opportunity for us at the same time. So, uh, we'll practice today um, and get an opportunity to um, you know begin the preparation for an outstanding football team. So, with that, we'll open up to questions. Brian, right in the middle. What yeah. uh, did you use last week for? What did you kind of drill down on? And, and was it a back to fundamentals thing, a rest thing? Would you? Yeah, I think a little bit of everything. I think we talked about it last week. I think it was important for us to to do some self scouting, some things that we needed to work on. I think it was important that you know, from a technical standpoint, we continue to grow technically in some areas, um, you know, on both sides of the ball. Uh, and and then, you know, you still want to meet a, a workload, um, you know, criteria because you know you just can't continue to go through the season and then all of a sudden you know put up a stop. Um, so we got to about 70% of our average workload uh, last week and uh, gave some, the guys some active uh, rest over the weekend. And then uh, they reported last night, and we're back to work today. Hey, Brian. Can you talk a little bit about your relationship with Tommy Reese? I know you tried to get him to come here with you. But then also when you watch Alabama on film, you'd see things that look familiar when you two were at Notre Dame together. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's, there's a connection there. You know, he played for me. Uh, we've got a – you know, a, a deep connection relative to um, a player-coach relationship and then a respect for him as, uh, as a coach and, and what he's done in this profession at an early age. He's, um, you know, somebody that, uh, you know, I have a lot of respect for and what he's done, certainly uh, at Notre Dame and then, uh, you know, in a very short time taking, you know, an offense and, and transforming it, you know, quickly during the season. Um, you know, he's a competitor. Uh, he always was as a player, uh, and uh, you can see that as um, uh, a coordinator. Uh, his teams are going to be physical. Uh, they're going to run the football. Um, uh, they're going to push the ball down the field. Um, and, and they're going to, more than anything else, they're going to utilize their personnel uh, as um, he'll – He'll mold uh, the offense uh, to fit the personnel. And I think that's what smart coaches do, and, you know, he's an outstanding football coach. Hi. Um, what can you say about the work ethic and the attitude of the players going into one of the toughest games of the season? Well, they've exhibited a great work ethic. I, I think, uh, you know, any any program is is built on a standard of of work. And, and look, I mean – this game requires an incredible commitment. Um, and so our players um, have been committed to that end. Uh, and certainly uh, it takes more than just a work ethic. It, it takes a, a consistency uh, week in and week out. Um, 
and and I, I like our mindset. Our, our team understands uh, that it's more than just you know coming into work. It's working efficiently, um, purposely, and um, I think that they've done that over the past um, you know year and a half, where they've understood that it's not just about working; it's about working uh, purposely. <clears throat> Hey, Coach, um, could you update the availability of Deuce, Denver, and Zai uh, ahead of this weekend? And, and I guess Ashton Stamps, where he's at with his rehab of injury. Deuce is not available. Um, Denver's not available. Zai is not available. Uh, Ashton Stamps will practice today. Coach, if you're in the same position that you are last year, will you go for two again? Uh, <laughs> the exact same position? Um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, that's a feel of the game. Um, so it's, it's really hard to answer the question. Uh, I felt like the game itself was such that our guys were executing at such a high level that that's, that was kind of what prompted that decision. Um, so I think, I think from my perspective, um, you know, it's, it's really about a gut feeling at the time more so than, you know, what's the perfect scenario and I think the feeling was that we were executing at a high level at that time it was time to go for it because right here um you know there's a lot of uh inexperience in the defensive backfield what have you seen from them during the bye week coming into a big game like this well um they've been around long enough now I mean I think you know you're you're into the season now eight games you know they, they had you know, some time here in camp and some, you know, we had some mid-year enrollment. So, you know, to, to say that they're inexperienced, yes, they haven't played a lot of SEC games, but they know what they're doing. They, they understand our techniques. They know what's expected of them. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're in a position where we feel comfortable and confident that they can go out and get the job done. Um, so um, even though they don't have a lot of SEC games underneath their belt, um, they're quite capable of going out there and, and playing at a high level. So I'd say more than anything else, you have to have confidence in your players and their ability to do it. Um, and, and I've got confidence that, you know, whether it's Jeremiah Hughes or um, uh, Javon Toviano, um, Ashton Stamps, um, all three of those freshmen can go out and, and uh, you know, play at the level necessary for us to, to win a championship. Coach, is it harder these days and when at all costs and pressure to win to stick to your long-term vision of a program and the guys and the standard that you want to live up to as opposed to the short-term gain of maybe playing somebody to help you win a game? Well, it's never been a problem for me um, because I have a vision for our program, and, and the vision includes more than just winning. Um, it includes developing um, – excellence both on and off the field and and so we're certainly not there yet you know we have to continue to grow relative to the identity of our football team so I know I'm hired and fired on wins and losses but I've never really worried about that um, this is the fifth program I've taken over and and I've always built the program uh, based upon excellence in the classroom and on the football field and then that process has usually taken care of itself, and it's equaled success. So the question is is a good question, but I don't think I've ever looked at it that way. Um, and it helps when you have a 10-year contract, too. Um, and so, again, that's not been my motivation in, in any way or shape, fashion. It's been much more about, you know, developing – uh, a championship program um, in, in all of those facets, first and foremost. Hey, Coach, you uh, complimented the Alabama offense with the way that they've sort of adapted from the beginning yep. of your town. What, what have you seen specifically with Jalen Milrow and the way that he's adjusted from the opener to now? You know, I think at first, you know, there was this sense that he was just going to run all over the place, right? This is going to be a running quarterback, but but he's not. I mean, he'll run, and 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 he can go from zero to sixty as as well as anybody. Um, and and he is a threat to run. There's no doubt about that. 
Um, but he's going to stand in the pocket. He's going to throw the football. And uh, the, the way they create offense is, is through a balance of running the football, uh, formationing you so you can get some shots down the field. And he throws the ball well. I mean, he's a, he throws the ball well. And, and he can hit the open targets. He can push the ball down the field. And so I think what, what he's done really well is when he's been given the opportunity to take shots down the field, he's hooked up. He hasn't missed receivers. When, when, when they've created the opportunities, he's, he's come through for them. And I think that that's been impressive. Uh, two, if I can. Uh, you, your offense has clearly established what it's capable of. How much is this week about them not trying to be something they're not or trying to do something they're not because the game is obviously elevated? And then secondly, uh, in the post-game video against Army, I think they gave you a game ball or something. You said something to the effect that, you know, you're really enjoying your time here. This is maybe your most enjoyable time. I was just curious why. Um, you alluded to the development of players. Is it because of kind of the, the development that you've seen this team from week one to kind of pull through? Yeah, I think the offense clearly recognizes their ability to um, be explosive but have balance on offense and defense. So there, there's no reason for them not to – be anything but who they are. Um, and so I think that there's a confidence level that, um, you know, if they prepare the right way, if they stick to their process, that they're going to have success. And, and so I think that that's been their mindset is just practice and, you know, put in the preparation the right way and things will take care of themselves. Um, what I was alluding to is essentially that this is a young group of players. You know, we traveled 21 freshmen again this weekend. Um, we had a, a, a slew of uh, transfers come in on defense, and, and it was really a new group uh, that we had to um, kind of, you know, onboard, if you will, uh, in the second season. And so just the development of the football team has been enjoyable, um, watching the growth of the football team. Um, they've done everything we've asked them to do. Uh, they... Um, have done the little things, um, and, and it's been hard. It's not been easy. You know, there was a difficult loss to start the season. There was a very disappointing loss on the road, but um, they, they haven't backed down at all, and, and that's been enjoyable as a coach. Coach, right here in the middle, um, are there any other injuries to report, particularly maybe Makai Wingo? Uh, yes, Makai had surgery. He is out for the season. Out for the season. Yes. Okay. Um, so, well, I would say this. Uh, the, the projections are six weeks, so we'll see where that, you know, where, where that goes. Right, right. Okay, and so on the D-line, you know, who, who are looking to fill that void, and how does his absence on the D-line sort of affect that group? Next man up, um, you know, we'll rely on uh, the rotation that, that you saw pretty much uh, against Army. It'll be the, a similar rotation. Coach, do, do you ever have time or, or an interest maybe in the off season to to look at the history of a like the history of the rivalry LSU Alabama or a series or jump into that kind of history at all? Even though I, I mean, it might not even be important. No, Mike. Mike updates me. Mike is my my local historian. Uh, he he will and and as you know, he carries history very well because he's been here so damn long. Um, he he can he fills me in. Um, how many years has it been? No, that you've been here. He's been here thirty years, so he is a resident historian. So uh, no, I, I think Mike does a great job of of filling me in on a lot of the history um, of all of the games from and and during the year I learn about Mississippi, Mississippi State, uh, the Auburn games, you know, um, this Alabama game. And for me, it's exciting, right, because I get immersed in, you know, some of the great games and the great rivals and the great names that have been part of this game. So I love it. I think it's exciting. And for me, because, you know, I had been in the Midwest for most of my career, um, I catch just kind of, you know, uh, the highlighted games. And, and so to get filled in on some of the other ones uh, has, been, has been really fun. I was wondering if ever, like after you finished the game at Notre Dame and got home, if you ever happened to catch any of an LSU-Alabama game over the years. Oh, heck yeah. I mean, I'm, I, I love watching college football, so it certainly would have been a game that I would have watched. Um, 
you know, I remember some of those slug fests when it was 10 to 3, 10 to 7, some of those tight, tight games. Um, great defense on both sides of the ball, um, fighting for every inch. Um, just some classic games uh, and really enjoyed watching them. Coach, when, uh, when Coach Saban speaks, he talks about the process and not outcomes, and I think you say a lot of the same things since you've gotten here. Um, how much do you uh, maybe see some similarities in terms of organization and your viewpoint on things, and do you observe other successful head coaches, read up on them, take notes to help yourself? Yeah, you know, I think most um, head coaches that have been in this business, um, you know, clearly understand that, um, you know, the the process of what you do and how you do it is, is probably, um, you know, most important, you know, to the day-to-day. -day. And, and, you know, we've been in it a long time, both of us. And, and so we have developed what our process is individually through our years of experience, uh, sometimes good and bad. Um, so he has shaped what his process is and, and how that um, has been so effective for him. And likewise, I've, I've shaped uh, the process that I use uh, on a day-to-day -day basis based upon uh, my experience. So I think, I think you'll find that um, in many ways um, coaches, you know, focus in on a process instead of outcomes because it's so important to develop that with your team. Yeah, Brian, right here. Uh, with Nick, he's adapted to so many coordinators over the years, like every few years. Uh, I mean, how does a guy do that and, and just keep it, the, keep it consistent? Is that something that you kind of look at like, I don't know how he does that? Well, that's a great question. I think it's been remarkable um, because – you know, you're bringing in, you know, uh, a different personality, a different person. You know, he does such a great job of vetting that out and making sure that they fit. And and clearly, you know, what Nick talks about on a day-to-day -day basis, they have to obviously um, be in lockstep with him. And, and, and that just goes to the great leadership that he provides on a day-to-day -day basis. So you got one voice, uh, and it's Coach Saban's voice. Uh, and everybody else is, is following in line with that. And so I think that that's allowed uh, multiple leadership positions underneath him to come in because uh, he creates such a clear message um, of what is going to take place on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, here in the middle. Um, with Jaden Daniels, uh, you know, fair or unfair, I think a lot of people that are watching the Heisman hopefuls are going to look at this game in particular for him um, and, and see how he does. Do you, given all the football you've seen him play and obviously, you know, your very nuanced view of, of what he's done here, do you think that's fair and is that something that, I mean, what's your expectation? It'll be part of the body of work um, throughout the entire season. You know, he's going to have other games. He's going to have the Florida game and Georgia State and Texas A&M and postseason, but it'll certainly be part of the body of work. If he throws four interceptions and, you know, you know, certainly uh, we don't play well, that will be part of the body of work throughout the entire season. Um, so, again, I, I don't know that it's one game that makes or breaks a Heisman. I think it's the body of work, and I think we're seeing that as the season, you know, plays out. Um, but certainly, um, you know, he's going to be judged on the entire season, and there'll be a lot of eyes, certainly, on this particular game. Hey, Coach, over here. Uh, so what's the status of uh, Emory Jones uh, from his injury, and what, what have you seen from his Lance Hurd just to have that luxury of a guy that, as a freshman, that's played a whole lot of football and has done pretty well for you all? Yeah, Emory's practicing. Um, we had him moving around last week, and – you know, we participated in our workouts, uh, but he'll be a full go for practice today. Lance has done a great job of, of coming in and um, playing at a high level. Um, it's great to have a true freshman that come in and uh, compete at the level he did against Auburn and, and at Army. Uh, so he'll be ready uh, and prepared if, if we do, in fact, call on him. Just curious what you've seen in Alabama's defense. So much of the talk has been about the progress on offense. Yeah, I mean, well coached, stingy. Kevin Steele and his staff do a great job. Um, 
you know, again, as I said, I, I think that there's not a lot of air in that defense. Um, you're going to have to be uh, on top of things. Um, we're going to have to be very balanced. Uh, you can't just want to just throw it all over the place or think that you're going to go in there and move the line of scrimmage. They're big and physical up front. The linebacker play is outstanding. As I mentioned earlier, I think, you know, Turner, um, Baswell on the edge, they, they, they're long and athletic. And, Look, they're, they're both 6'3", 6'4", 240 pounds, um, and, and they create problems in, in the pass rush and, and certainly, um, you know, can run and hit. So it's a really good football team. It's Again, I, as I said, I think it's the best defense um, in all three phases. Um, and, look, I, I, it's the challenge that, that an offense like ours, um, you know, really is is up for uh, and will have to play their best um, but that's what this is about right is you want to be your best when your best is needed and our offense will have to be at their best when their best is needed uh, just to, just to confirm Brian uh, uh, chestnut and Harris I any chance they could be eligible to play Saturday or is like no, no they're not playing okay uh, I'm sure a lot of LSU fans following our tweets and watching live, probably freaking out a little bit about the fact that you have all these defensive backs out and now Wingo is out for the, out for the rest of the season. How do you deal with this? Obviously, you've got a great offense going, and this is, not your first, this is not your first big game, but it's a big game, and you're missing some key pieces uh, on your defense going. Yeah, you know, clearly we'd love to have, um, you know, Wingo in the lineup, but he has an injury, and you know, we're, we're built for uh, injuries. You can't be built for 11 players. Uh, we have depth. We have good players that will step up and uh, be ready to play, and, and we'll play at, at a high level. So, um, again, it's part of football. Um, in this game, if, if you lose one guy and you're, you're not able to answer the bell, then you're not very good. Um, we think we've got a good football team. Um, we're going to miss them. Um, but we have guys that will step up and, and compete at a high level. And down here on your right, um, talking about next man up, uh, Jordan Jefferson, but also some backups like Paris Shan, Braden yeah. Swinson have all played really well for you all this year. Kind of, what are your thoughts on those guys coming off the bench? Yeah, I think Jordan Jefferson's played at a high level. Um, it's graded out probably as our, our best defensive tackle. Um, Physical at the point of attack, uses his hands well. It's getting great separation. Gap integrity has been outstanding. It's playing really well. Paris Shan, technically very, very good. Um, grading out at, you know, at the top uh, for our defensive line over the last three weeks. Uh, and, and Swinson's been really good in pass rush. So um, those three guys, we... <laughs> You know, as much as it hurts that, you know, we don't have a few of the guys that we got in the portal um, at the defensive back position, um, those three guys, uh, and, and having Omar back too uh, makes a difference. Um, having a veteran linebacker who um, knows the game really well, uh, those four guys have made a significant difference for us. Hey, Coach, uh, just yeah. to clarify, with, with Zahi's unavailable for the Alabama game specifically, not just for, like, today. He's unavailable for the Alabama game, and as I said, he could be out for a significant period of time. Okay. Yes. Um, and uh, and with your with your secondary, with your younger corners, how do you sort of prepare for a guy like Milrow who can really chuck the ball downfield? Like, how, what what kind of emphasis is it on you know trying to stop those big plays downfield? Yeah, you know, look, as I said, th these kids. They're elite players coming out of high school. I mean, they're elite players. Um, and now you're putting them in a position where they just have to be confident and trust their technique and, and trust what, what we've taught them. And so now it's now taking that trust and putting it in from preparation to performance and, 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 and playing emotionally at a level which allows them to do their job. And... I think we've been at it long enough now where these guys are ready to go. They got no choice unless you're ready to go. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Uh, we could have a matchup problem. Um, but these guys are ready to play. And, and look, um, they're, they're young. Um, 
many have said inexperienced. I get it. They haven't played a lot of SEC games. Um, but these guys are really good players. And th they'll get out there and they'll compete. They'll compete for LSU. You, you mentioned Omar. Uh, mm -hmm. Just what kind of settling factor has he been since he's come back? Well, he's, you know, again, you know, we had Witt in there, and everybody loves Witt, and I love Witt too. He's athletic. He's fast. He runs around. He he really is going to be an outstanding football player for us. Um, Omar brings a, a settling influence out there with Greg Penn. You've got two veteran players um, that have seen it, done it, um, have played a lot of snaps. And as much as we talk about the back end of the defense that don't have a lot of snaps, it's nice to be able to come back and have, you know, two veteran linebackers in there uh, communicating uh, to the back end with two safeties that have played a lot of football. So we're really, you know, looking at the, the veteran presence that he brings, and, and it's an added advantage for us in terms of having him on the field. Great. Thank you.